Hello, in this tutorial series, we will discuss about designing as well as writing VHDL code of second generation circuit. Now, friends, in the previous uh, lectures or video lectures, we have discussed about writing VHDL code for combinational circuit. So, let us start with sequential circuits. First, we will discuss about SR flip flop. As you all know, flip flop is nothing but a sequential circuit whose Present output depends upon present input as well as past input. Basically, flip flop is a one bit memory storage device or a one bit memory cell. In that, first we will try to describe SR flip flop. Now, whenever we deal with flip flop, we can have an input term as S and R. S stands for set, R stands for reset, and there will be a clock first. And we will have the outputs as QN, which stands for normal output and QN bar that stands for inverted output. Now in some of the cases when we are writing with or we are dealing with a truth table we can write it as QN plus 1 that indicates next state outputs. Now based on the present input combinations it may be S and R our outputs are going to be changed. Sure we have that term as input present input as S R and the output terms as Q and Q bar. Now as we have only two input terms so the combinations are going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. In case of the first combination 0, 0, the normal output Q is equals to QN and QN bar remains equals to QN bar. That means there will not be any action that has been taken place. So we can put it as no change in the given terms. Now when we come across the next term as S0 and R is equals to 1, in that case the normal output remains 0 and inverted becomes 1. So they are complementary to each other and this term is called as reset because the normal output is going to be 0 so it is in reset mode. Now when it is 1 0 Q is going to be 1 and its complementary will be 0. This is called as set condition as Q or the normal output is set to 1. Then the last combination when it is 1 1 this is going to be undefined. This is going to be undefined and this is also called as a race around condition because here both the outputs are going to be 0 0 and this condition is not allowed because the first output is normal and the second is inverted so they should be complementary to each other so you can see it here this is 0 1 this is 1 0 but in this case both the outputs are same so this condition is called as race around condition or it is undefined in SR now based on the given terminologies let us write its VHDL code as usual, we'll start with defining the library elements as IEEE. Then we'll use it IEEE dot its standard package and all the components from it. So we'll use the extension dot all. We'll put the name as entity SR flip flop is. In case of port, we have the first input S and second input as R. We have placed this as S yes, input standard logic, R input standard logic. Along with that, we have a clock pulse, the reset input, and we will have two output terms, they are Q and QP. Q is normal and QB stands for bar, that is complementary output. Next, when we come across writing its architecture, so we can write architecture behavioral of a certain flop is. Let us initialize this and we will write the statement as process. Now we have four input terms including present SR, clock and reset. Reset term is useful in case of flip flop because it is used to reset all the output conditions and given terms. Now, in, in order to initialize process statements, we will write the statement as begin. And the first condition we will put if restart or reset is equals to 1. Now, once this condition is satisfied, then our both the outputs are going to be 0, 0. So, we should put them as 0, 0. That means it is not accepting any of the input. Next, else if the condition is there if clock is equals to 1 and clock tick event. Now what this statement indicates? This simply indicate that the clock is changing its state from 0 to 1. That means there is an event occur. Now if you see clock tick event is basically an attribute that we have studied in the previous lectures. It returns a true value if the event is occurred. That means it is switches from 0 to 1. Now whenever it changes its state from 0 to 1, the inputs are going to be asked and we'll write the condition as if s is not equal to now this is going to be not equal to operator 
R. That means the values of S and R are not going to be same. Now in two conditions, this will be satisfied. When S is 0, R is 1. And in second condition, when S is 1 and R is 0. In both of these conditions, this, con this statement will be executed. And in that case, our normal output should be equal to S and inverted output should be equal to R. So if S is 0, we will get 0 and R will get 1. And if S 1, R will be 0. So this condition will be satisfied. Now else if we have the last condition, S is equal to 1. Here it should be S is equal to 1 and R is equal to 1. Now when both the inputs are going to be 1, 1, then the output is going to be undefined. So we can write Q as Z and Q as Z. Z is nothing but unknown term that we already defined in case of attributes. So this is going to be the undefined or race around curve. Finally, we'll end the if statement. Then we can end this if statement. Then we'll end the process and we'll end the architecture that is going to be our data. So in this way, we can write a VHDL code for SR. So the condition is quite important. The first is when reset is one, the outputs are going to be zero. And if there is an event on the clock pulse, then only the inputs are going to be 